this thing to rest. There's two more points I want to make on this uh, now that it comes to mind. Because um, there was another fellow that um, uh, inquired of the prophet. He said, uh, I heard you say that God loves so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, I don't think this guy's such a great man, you know. And the prophet said, well, go and stay with him for a while. You remember the story. Yeah. So this, this, yeah, this fellow did. He went and he stayed with this other fellow. And he stayed in his house for, you know, I don't know how long. But he came back to the prophet and said, look, he's still, you know, I don't get it. This guy doesn't do, he doesn't pray five times a day. He doesn't do all these things. And uh, da, 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 da. And the prophet said, look, what he does do, he's faithful in. And this is why Allah loves him. Okay. So let your listeners learn a lesson here. And there's one more lesson that's relevant to today about this whole point of Dr. Omar drinking with his left hand. How could he possibly do that? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we can't listen to this man. He wants to discredit me for, for this simple little thing. Okay. I'll tell you who the kind of people who do this. I spent 10 years amongst the top olim in Malaysia as an academic there. And I never changed my habit just to pretend. I realized that, you know, it was an unconscious thing. And I would always, you know, so I just, I never changed. I never pretended to be like the prophet. Okay. I just never pretended this. So everybody, most people took me as I, as I am. And I noticed a couple of things. I noticed two things. The most pious men that I met never mentioned this. Hmm. They never criticized me for this. The most pious, the two most pious, Professor Dr. al Muhammadi, God rest him, hmm. and uh, Professor Dr. Arafin Suhaimi. Mm. The two most blessed men that I have met in Malaysia, they never mentioned a thing about this. And I ate and drank with my left hand all the time during many, many conversations. OK, they never said a thing. But I'll tell you who criticized me. <laughs> People who never wanted to learn. Mm. And I, I, I'll tell you a brief story here, or just a brief anecdote. To exemplify this point, I was invited to give a public talk, as I was on many occasions in Malaysia. And uh, I didn't know who these people were. I just went. I get an invitation. I go. And I began talking. And the topic um, uh, came to the point of um, uh, female circumcision. Okay, And I spoke against it. Okay, Basically... It's like cutting the head of your penis off. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's what it is for a woman. It's the equivalent. Yeah, Anyone who, you know anyone who does this is a savage. Okay. Now, uh, it, now I, I, I was talking about this, and the moment I brought this up, and then I related it with the Muslim Brotherhood, the man who had invited me stopped me and informed everybody that I can't possibly be speaking the truth because I drank with my left hand. <laughs> this was a Muslim Brotherhood event, okay? And they support female circumcision. It's mm -hmm. part of the male chauvinist facade. We can talk about that on another occasion. I just want to make the point here. It is the ty tyrants who push these issues. Not the truly pious people. They never push it. There is no force in religion. Remember that. It's like what Jesus said. You let go the, I forget, you let go the camels and fight over the nants, uh, gants, yeah. like, or fight over the mosquitoes. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, and, you don't, you're talking about these little gnats and you don't remove the log in your own eye, you see? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we'll put that. That, to is a, that is a big problem because there's this concept of Islamic piety oh. that has really become that's become very perverted in a sense. Right. Yes, it, it's, uh, it's a perversion. It's a perversion. And it's the same it's sort of because, you know, the prophet was. A